it was surreal um, to be walking where MLK had been, walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. To look down and see where Bloody Sunday happened, where that massacre happened, it just kind of like, it, it was emotional and I felt sad, but also hopeful. When I initially arrived to the Deep South, um, I saw people who looked like me more than I thought. Even getting off the plane in Atlanta, seeing all the people of color, the black people in, in positions of power. I saw people who resembled me more than I thought, and that was kind of a cool experience because I got to see the potential that I hold. We actually touched the ground, the soil. We went to Martin Luther King's house. We touched the ground that he used to play on when he was little. There were a lot of things that I saw when I went on this trip that I had never even realized were a possibility in our history. There is no way to truly prepare for this trip, emotionally, physically, and mentally. There's no way. When I went there, um, a big part of my experience was feeling like, oh man, I should have been, I should have been there during that time. Looking at my peers on the trip, I saw you no know, dry eyes. I saw lots of weary eyes that saw pain that they never thought they would see before. The phrase I just kept hearing in my head the whole time I was there was, if not me, then who? They had a little shoe of the little girls where she, she was wearing that shoe when she was killed. And it was just like, wow, these little girls sacrificed their life for something that we could be here for today. I need to get somewhere where I can actually learn my history and I can actually, I guess, find myself so I can help others like that look just like me find themselves. When I saw the names and the unknown names of the people that were lynched in the Deep South, I thought of my grandfather, who fled from lynching violence to move to New Jersey to start a new life. And they knew that people were just going to go to jail, ruin their records, and leave their families for this cause. And it just put into perspective that, like, you know, they knew that people were going to die for this cause. This really happened, and, like, the textbooks are just their pages, but going there, it's just like, wow, okay, this, this is real now. Well, as you could see, the students were greatly impressed, and it's just as what we had hoped for when it comes to vision and purpose of this project. Really, the gift of sacrifice that was made available by the 1950s and 1960s civil rights activists left us a national treasure, and each landmark in the Deep South we were able to open up that treasure chest and actually see students before our own eyes go through a metamorphosis in relation to a kind of ability to recreate, to uh, kind of imagine and dream, and maybe even seeing themselves as empowered agents of change. And so what this trip did was unlock that potential. And what it did, as it was said before by one of the students, clearly, if not me, then who? And uh, I really appreciate those kind of statements. And as our last student just mentioned, history was just on the books before, but now it's become real. And that's the value of this project. We were able to, in a sense, turn something cold, historical and distant of the past, and make it an emotive and present reality. And we hope this trip is just the first of many more to come. We need your help to continue this impactful, life-changing program. Please contact the EW Foundation to help fund future trips for our Eastern students.